Indeed. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the road to the Final Four as CBS Sports proudly continues its 20th consecutive year of covering the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Today, we continue the first round of play, and by the time the games conclude tonight, only 32 teams will remain along the road to this year's Final Four in Minneapolis. I am joined, as usual, by one of Ohio State's most loquacious alumni. I love the word loquacious. <laughs> Clark Kellogg, tough day for uh, your former Buckeyes, and uh, tough day for the Big Ten, too, but a great day for the tournament. It really was a terrific, tumultuous Thursday. Three points that I want to make very quickly. One, 12 of the 16 games, very competitive. Number two, seven lower seeds win yesterday. And number three, maybe this is most important, in all the games that were won, the star players for those respective teams not only stepped up, but stepped out. I hope we can have comparable day to day as we had yesterday. Tumultuous, a four syllable word. You're going to have to and do better. And it was better. three T's in a row, too. Did you, that. Check, did you check that Once out? Once again, we have 16 games for you with first round action today in the Midwest and in the South regions. In Dayton, Northwestern State, the 64th seed team from Natchitoches, Louisiana, takes on top seed at Illinois. The Demons are led by 6'7 senior forward Chris Thompson. His 18 points led Northwestern State past Winthrop in Tuesday night's opening round game. The Fighting Illini showcase the talents of Big Ten Player of the Year Frank Williams. They're 6'3 soft more guard tip time at the Dayton Arena 12 15 Eastern down in Memphis number 12 Gonzaga tests number five Virginia the Bulldogs are paced by West Coast Conference Player of the Year Casey Calvary their 6 8 senior forward the Cavaliers counter with senior guard Donald Hand their do it all floor leader and then at the bottom of the hour Temple and Texas will lock horns while Butler will brace for Wake Forest. Now here's how the second wave of game shapes up beginning at 2.37 Eastern time when Charlotte meets Tennessee in an 8-9 showdown. Indiana State takes on number four Oklahoma and then Western Kentucky meets Florida. Eastern Illinois goes against Arizona the second seed in the Midwest and Clark is here now with some of his keys for the day's action. They're going to have to be dandies to match yesterday's. They certainly will have to be but when you look at yesterday's games perimeter play ruled the day that will be the case again I think today I think you'll see more higher seeded teams prevail today but if you're looking for some dangerous lower seeds keep an eye on Temple and Gonzaga in this afternoon's game. All right Clark the road to the final four will continue here on CBS right after this. Last night, for only the fourth time in NCAA tournament history, a 15th seed upset a second seed. As Hampton students gather on campus to watch, the Pirates struck a chord for underdogs everywhere with their dramatic victory over Ohio's Iowa State. Iowa State on an 11 0 run. Showtime. Watch out, five point game. A lot of time left. Now, this is where the better team starts to get a little bit nervous. Rancic denied it. What a big block by Williams with the fourth foul. Up and in. Could it happen in Boise? Inside the big fella. Williams. Iowa State pushing time running down. Tensley off the iron. win. I thought our kids just persevered. You know, they they took control of the game and we just hung in there and hung in there and hung in there. 
15 over a two. It doesn't happen all that often. In fact, since the tournament expanded, here are the teams, the number 15 seeds that knocked off two seeds. And today, number two, North Carolina meets Princeton. Number two, Arizona meets Eastern Illinois. Clark? Based on that graphic, that only happens once every two and a half, three years, and it only happens once in any particular tournament. I don't see it happening, but keep an eye on Eastern Illinois' dynamic duel. Kyle Hill and Henry Domer can't. They average 46 points a game between them. All right, Clark, the road to the final four will continue after this word from your local station. Hi, once again, everyone. Welcome to the road to the final four. We are happy to have you with us as CBS Sports continues its 20th consecutive year of coverage of the NCAA men's basketball tournament. I'm Greg Gumbel, along with Clark Kellogg, the tough thing about having a great first day is following it up with a great second day. Well, you and I can only hope that we have the kind of games we had yesterday. Competition was great, buzzer beaters, fast, um, dramatic finishes, so hopefully we're in for the same today. You know what they say, where there's hope, there's hope. <laughs> Four games coming your way. Northwestern State tackles number one seed, Illinois. Gonzaga meets Virginia. Temple will tussle with Texas, and Butler will battle Wake Forest. In the second wave of games, tipping at about 237 Eastern, all eyes will be on Florida, number three seed in the South, and Arizona, the second seed in the Midwest. First round NCAA tournament action is coming up. We will start everyone off with Northwestern State and number one Illinois. Those of you expecting to see Gonzaga and Virginia will take you there for the tip at 1225 Eastern Time. Similarly, those of you slated for Temple and Texas or Butler Wake Forest will bring you to the start of those games at the bottom of the hour. Clark and I will be here throughout the day. Enjoy the games here on CBS. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by United Airlines, IBM, the Odyssey minivan, and by Singular. CBS sports coverage of the NCAA championship, the road to the final four, brings you to the heartland, the Dayton Arena in Dayton, Ohio. The top seed, Fighting Illini of Illinois, taking on the Northwestern State Demons of tiny Natchitoches, Louisiana, the 16 seed. There you see the array of games we've got yet to come, and it is my honor as the play-by-play uh, -play commentator for this duo to welcome Rick Patino. Hello, everyone. I'm Tim Brando. Great to have you with us, Coach. And let's start with this matchup, 1 versus 16. It's never happened. There is some history, though, for Northwestern having won in an opening round game. No question. If the Demons need some inspiration, all they have to do is dial up 1-800-Hampton. <laughs> nice choice. Good line. What a start for Patino. You look at the starting lineups, Thompson, Burks, Roberts, Byers, Dawson, and Hancock for Northwestern. Sergio McLean, Cook, Griffin, Bradford, and Williams. Frank Williams, the true star of the backcourt, a real difference maker for Bill Self. You look at the officials, Dick Cartmel, Robert T. Adams, and Larry Wynn. The closest a 16 seed has ever come to beating a one. A couple of occasions, you'll recall Princeton and Georgetown. Magnificent matchup years ago. Pete Carrill, the coach, and then another game involving Western Carolina and Purdue back in 1996 the Catamounts had two opportunities with a three pointer and then a two point follow shot neither fell Purdue then went on to lose to Georgia the winners of the eight nine matchup after they had beaten Clemson in Albuquerque so it's almost happened but never actually occurred and uh, Northwestern State has the uh, I think the answer of a trivia question in many respects, uh, Rick, they're the only 16 seed that can say they've won an opening round game. Well, I'm not sure the upset will happen tonight. And I hope for the Big Ten's sake that it's, it's, it's not that obvious. But it'll be, a, it'll be a good ball game. Northwestern State, a team that uh, likes to spread the floor. Illinois, of course, uh, many would tell you the most athletic team out of the Big Ten. And the Big Ten has taken a hit one and three after day one of this NCAA tournament. Inside the work done by Brian Cook using the glass for the first bucket of the afternoon. There's a steal, and right away Williams takes it, leaves it, and Marcus Griffin makes it a four-nothing game. 
Now the, the, the eyes are uh, a little wide-eyed here as Hancock is operating at the point. Pooh Davis, one of the guards for this team from Northwestern State, is uh, playing with a bad knee. He had to drain it prior to the start of today's game. This is Myers Dawson, the only player with prior tournament experience. He played at Miami before transferring. Now you see they're reading the passing lane all the way. And he gives it, he, he telegraphs the pass and gives it away. Great behind the back pass and the strong finish. The one thing that, that you're going to notice here with Illinois is going to read the passing lane, but the Demons want to drive on this team. They think they're a little slow laterally and they're going to try to spread the floor and drive to the basket. From deep, three pointer won't go for Melvin Roberts. And quickly, McCain, Sergio gets it up the floor. Williams drains a tray, and just like that, 7 0, fighting a line eye. This is a, you hate to say it, but very early in a game when a 16 seed is playing a, a one, now it's just confidence trying to get to the first television timeout. Another steal. Northwestern State did play some high caliber Division I opponents this year. And McLean knocks down another. It's 10 0, and uh, damage control timeout for Mike McConathy. 10 unanswered in less than two minutes. Northwestern State surely kings for a day in their victory over Winthrop. Dior Fisher was a difference maker, and Chris Thompson was playing high low alley oop. And the Demons got their first ever tournament win, and the band played on, so they got here. Now, those of you expecting to see Virginia Gonzaga, that game tips at 12:25. Texas Temple and Wake Forest Butler will tip at 12:30. We'll get you to those games shortly. Do you detect uh, that Northwestern State is maybe thinking they're uh, over their heads just a bit here in the early going, Rick? Well, they have a bit of stage fright right now, and they need that was probably the most crucial play that Mike McConaughey drew up in the last time out and unfortunately was a challenge three. Corey Bradford swings it to McLean on the opposite end. First miss. They were four for four from the floor and off the rebound by Hancock. The Illini pick up the foul to go against Marcus Griffin. Northwestern to get over this needs an easy bucket. They have to get something to the rim right now. Stay away from the jump shot. Get something to the rim. Hopefully get fouled. Demons are 0 for 2 from the floor and a couple of turnovers as well. Mentioned they played some high caliber Division I opponents. They played at Arkansas earlier this year and lost by more than 60 points. The smaller schools, of course, have to play those guaranteed uh, games to get gate money to really subsidize their programs. There's another turnover. Williams leads the break. Nice defensive work by Melvin Roberts to take it away for the Demons. First turnover by the Illini. Really haven't gotten the ball into Thompson's hands. Roberts drains the mid-range jumper. That's the bucket they sorely needed, Rick. No question about it. All you're thinking right now, are we ever going to score? Illinois not only guard laden, but their power guys, their upper bodies are very strong. And you see McLean getting it inside to Brian Cook for the easy deuce. 12-2 Illinois. This Lion I team looks like an ad for Gold's Gym, and it, it's overpowering for Northwestern inside. Byers Dawson, best player for Northwestern Who's State in terms of individual Michael talent, Dawson. trailing a three to make it a 12-5 game. Greg Gumbel in New York will keep you updated on Illinois, the top seed against going, going against Northwestern State. But right now, it's time to take you folks to Memphis, Tennessee. First round action in the South. Gonzaga gets set to take on Virginia. Let's send you there and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarkle. All right, correct. Thank you. The 5-12 matchup in the South from the Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. It's Virginia taking on Gonzaga. First of four matchups here today in the South, highlighted later on by the defending national champion, Michigan State Spartans, trying to go for their second consecutive title. Welcome, everybody, courtside as we kick off our coverage in Memphis. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. ...thrives on that. They've got to... Players with explosive first steps, slide of size perhaps, but when Dior Fisher gets in the game to go along with this man, Chris Thompson, they've got a decent high-low game. Timmy, they're going to have to make the perimeter shots right now. It, it, it reminds me of 
Jackie Gleason in the honeymoon is with the stage fright right now in the $99,000 question. They've got to get to the rim somehow and stop at the jump shot. Out of bounds off Illinois. Thank you for taking me through TV trivia. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. He has really improved that over the last two or three years in his career. He used to be a scorer. Now the general on the floor. Good decisions for him. Virginia does well. Bad decisions, they don't do so well. Starting lineups here at the Pyramid. And for Gonzaga, Mark Spink, Zach Gord, Casey Calvary, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, Blake Stepp, the Freshman of the Year, and Dan Dickow. What a story. Transfer from Washington, stepping in for Matt Santangelo, who graduated last season, and they have not lost a step, the Bulldogs. As for Virginia, you know about Hall, Mason, Hand, Williams, and Watson. Mark Few, what success he's had in two years at Gonzaga, taking over for Dan Munson, who left for Minnesota. Few was a 10-year assistant before getting the head coaching stint. And Pete Gillen brings his third team to the NCAA tournament. He did it at Xavier. He did it at Providence. And what a job he has done at Virginia. Illinois leads by seven. Those of you expecting to see Texas Temple and Wake Forest Butler, those games tip off at 1230 and we'll get you there momentarily. Here it's a Northwestern State out of Natchitoches, Louisiana, the hometown of Steel Magnolias, where that motion picture was shot. Beautiful town, uh, an hour's drive from Shreveport, Louisiana, known for its Christmas lights. Bring uh, 100,000 people to that uh, fair city during the holidays. Fires Dawson off the bounce. You can see Northwestern's strategy. They want to try to isolate and go one on one, but they need more motion, more play of movement because Illinois is sloughing off and helping. It can't be it can't be one on five. It has to be one on one. Thompson jump hook not there. Loose ball taken out of there by Sergio McLean. As numbers, Bradford the pull up. Murray Bradford's the key. If he has a big night, Illinois is going to play great. Uh, they're six of eight from the floor right now and lead it by 10, 15 to five. All five starters in the column. Thompson. You can see the help. Again, it's just one pass drive the seam. They need more play and movement, more motion. Williams. The finger roll, and they're making it look easy. Up by a dozen. And there was no Kirk Haston there to block the shot. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, the Haston block is something that will stay with a lot of people in uh, Illinois for some time. Another Big Ten semifinal. Thompson trying to take it to the hoop, and he's fouled underneath. Goes against Griffin. Number 34, Brian Cook. His first team. Greg Gumbel in New York, hot shooting Illinois. We'll keep track of that game, the Illini and Northwestern State. Some of you are headed for New Orleans, where Temple will meet Texas. Jim Nance and Billy Packer are standing by at the Superdome. Others are headed for Kansas City. Butler meeting Wake Forest. We'll send you out to Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery there. Enjoy the games, everyone. Getting set to fire up another first round side in the South region. First between the 10th seeded Butler Bulldogs out of Indianapolis and the 7th seeded Wake Forest Demon Deacons. One of four. History. Hello, friends. Jim Nance with Billy Packer. And Jimmy. something very unusual. All eight programs here in New Orleans, Billy, have at some point in their history been to a Final Four. It's never happened before. Never happened before in this tournament. Jim, I think this is one of the strongest sites I have ever seen. Sliding as they come into this tournament. But they do have a stud underneath the big. Take them down the floor, though, after a made bucket. The Zags looking, looking to push, find little seams in the defense. They don't mind playing the Virginia type game. Five points now for Blake Stepp. 7 4 Gonzaga. Hand on a fadeaway. Friendly rim. Sure is. Good little drift away from the defender, though. So far, the Zags making good decisions with the ball. Here they come again. Off a made basket in transition. And Gord comes up short. Now both of these teams going after the glass. Stop and go, Mason Jr. Tough angle. Near 
barely got it to go down, and here's Dickow the other way. Nice little tip there by Gord to spring this fast break. Dickow off the crossover. Good and one. There's the way a guy can keep the pressure on you with the basketball. A lot of times we talk about defensive pressure, really rattling guards. But watch on the offensive end here. Watch the pressure that he keeps going right at him. An extra dribble, forcing hand to play defense. That's a way to come at you. And I think one of the key things for the Zags is they're showing early. They're not intimidated by the ACC. First substitution, Alex Hernandez, the junior college transfer, checks in and replaces Mark Spink, the defensive player of the year. In the West Coast Conference, Dickow has given Gonzaga a 10-6 lead. Bodies flying inside Gordon Watson, and it'll go against Virginia. Travis Watson picks up the personal Cavaliers out of Charlottesville, and they're back in the big dance for the first time since 1997, an at-large bid and 15th appearance overall. Good step as he's coming down the floor yelling out plays. It's a youngster back there. Here's Dickow, a three. Oh, pretty. They are just really reading one another well. Their concentration level right on the money. Not rattled at all. Good, good start for the Zags right here. Virginia now, a team that has struggled on the road all season long. This is in Charlottesville right here. They have a tough situation early on. Gonzaga now five of seven from the field. Jumper from Williams doesn't go. Knocked in the air. Out of bounds, Gonzaga ball. A 13-6 Bulldog lead. Look at the penetration. Up that way, the big guy Gord says, I don't want the ball out there. Give it the step and let them shoot the basketball step and dick out. You wonder why they don't want to be called Cinderella. Great start for Gonzaga. Vern Lundquist goes, thank you, Dave Odom. Here's LaValle Jordan, backs out high. And into the hands of the 5'9", Jackson. Now they're patient, but they will take the good looks deep as well. There's the empty pass along the baseline. Out of bounds, and it's tipped last by Wake Forest. And Butler will throw it in. Here's Jackson, the junior from East Lansing, misfiring in the first shot. And the Beacons will run. Kick it left side. Jumper is taken. No good. Rylan Hangey with a rebound for Butler. Throughout the day, we'll keep you up to date on late scores in tournament games. Just look in the upper left-hand portion of your screen. Nice decision by Hicks. Couldn't knock it down. Now they're going to have to do a lot with the bounce right now, I think, Butler, because this is a strong defensive team. They stand people up Wake Forest. Laval Jordan, the senior from Albion, Michigan. Here's Brandon Miller. Transfer in his first year as a starter. There's that slip and a pretty yep. good show by Wake Forest. I mean, they've got the wide bodies. That's the one difference in, in leagues, I think, is the mass, the ability to cover more area. And you can slip generally against some teams, but they'll stand you up in the ACC. Well, it was Butler losing in the first round last week, or last year, rather. And this is going to be over and back. No, it's fine. It's fine. Nobody touched it. No control. No control. Even if he did touch it, Vern, it went in the backcourt. He never had control, so it's okay. Play on. Now in the corner, back to Miller. They kick it left side. First long jumper taken and can from outside by LaValle Jordan. How about that? First time we've been right on an open. <laughs> now they can stretch the floor. This should open up the dribble lanes. Now Robert O'Kelly, number four, left side it goes. On the baseline, they kick it back outside to Broderick Hicks, number three, 6'1", junior from Houston. Right, this is where it's tough. Some guy on the box really loads up. They got to take away that duck in. He's powerful. Good show by five on the shot clock. Veneretta from way outside. Sangaya rebounds for Wake Forest. O'Kelly with a jumper for three. Off the mark, rebound, and knocked out of bounds. Touch last by Wake Forest. Good uh, rebound there by Cornett. Three-nothing Butler in the early going. 
mentioned the fact that uh, they lost in the first round of course one of the more dramatic games last year that loss to Florida and ironically that game took place on Wake Forest his home court is that amazing yeah and of course uh, Miller with the field goal again eventually Florida to the final four now in the lane up nice down. job by some guy on the floor, held ball, and the possession arrow favors Wake Forest. Terrific job raking that. Something you have to do on the post pass. Uh, Butler's very good at kicking the basketball out. That time, Angie just uh, kept it a little bit too long on the double. Now, Wake Forest trailing by three. 19 and 10 for the season. But a real disappointment in the last part of the season up and under travel now Hicks uh, not a bad that's their high post set and a little back cut well done by Dave Odom but did not the finish because uh, Dave Odom I can remember Dave running five star basketball camp uh, just a great spirit and a guy that loves the game he handles he was talking about the Duke game with both of us and that he felt good not about the loss but they right. played well and Duke played well and a great respect for the opponent classy guy he was chatting about uh, life in the ACC, and he said it is hard, <laughs> but rewarding. It's very, very hard. It might be rewarding after the season, uh, but when you're going through, it's punishment. Brandon Miller, there's a mismatch. Vitoretta out on him. Got to take him with the dribble, and he does. Kicks it outside. Hangey with a jumper off the front iron. The tip is good. Very active, huh? Laval makes the jump shot earlier this time. Attacks the tip. His speed is tough to cover. Howard's got to pay attention. Five nothing Butler. This is a Butler team that went into Wisconsin in January and handed the Badgers a defeat in Madison. Yeah, very impressive. You watch that game. Great confidence. This is the end. They're going to really have to tee it up. Take these big guys out of the box. Tenacious defense here and the leaner. A foul is going to be called on Jordan. Go back to the tip in, Bill. How about Hangey with that defense? You're right, but here's nobody uh, stepping in and checking out. You got to put a body on, just can't rely on. I like that cam, huh? Uh -oh. The Arnold cam. Mike Arnold, our director, will give you all those shots all day long. Josh Howard at the free throw line, where he is hitting 68% of the year, gets the first. And Wake Forest on the board. <laughs> Brandon Miller and Josh Howard accidentally walked into each other. Miller looked over and said, he's bigger than I thought. <laughs> Getting to know one another. <laughs> uh, Josh Howard, one of those sensational performers, going to be a great talent. Learning to play in the fast lane. Here he gets a little nickel dimer in the backcourt, though. Yep. Hometown lad from uh, Winston-Salem. Picks up his first foul. A big upside in his game. I mean, he uh, understands offense, uh, very clever, can hang. Can excite some people. We have played just a little over 345 in this game, a 5-2 Butler lead. Here's Jackson. Right side, Miller, he can can it from outside. Unbelievable range. And then he looks. Did you see the look? He went right to Howard with a little whooping. Don't fight this guy, Bird. What a competitor. 67 threes made now for the season for Brandon Miller out of Newcastle, Indiana. Skip pass. Nice penetration, but good defense, and it's cleared. Here comes Miller, right side, touch pass in the corner, nice drive, kick it back outside for three. Got it. They love to move the basketball, unselfish. And you mentioned earlier, Thomas Jackson, he brings the juice, and Miller right away up, clapping hands and faces. Uh, this is a tough basketball team. Laval Jordan has led the way, the Butler Bulldogs have jumped out to a nine-point lead. Jim Nance, Billy Packer back in New Orleans. We're pleased to have Bonnie Bernstein with us this weekend. Bonnie? Hi, Jim. Well, Texas coach Rick Barnes sought some credible advice this week from John Calipari, who faced John Cheney's vaunted matchup zone defense 21 times while in Massachusetts. And basically, Cheney said the same thing Billy's been alluding to since the beginning of the game. If you don't have your shot on the perimeter right away, you have to penetrate either by the dribble or the pass and make Temple work. Jim? Calipari, he had a lot well, of interesting really matchups when he was at UMass against Temple. Four times in the A-10 final, John Calipari was successful. Matter of fact, Temple's win over Mass this time broke that drought of four losses in the finals. Evans goes back outside. Again, Texas working that perimeter. Kelly steps in. 
Good penetration, and that is available. Boddicker will go to the line for two. When you look at this Temple team, uh, Jim, they don't have a lot of size. Lide is wide and, and obviously a big guy, but the rest of the team relatively small. Texas has a big advantage and they have to dominate on the boards. And in order to do that, they have to give up that perimeter shot and start getting the ball down inside and try to get some putbacks as they had there. It's the second foul on Hawkins of Temple. And Boddicker, the 6'9 freshman from Duncanville, Texas, one of three from Duncanville. We'll shoot one more. All Big 12 freshman team and only the second McDonald's High School All-American ever to commit to Texas. Chris Clack being the other. But that won't last for long, the way that Barnes has been a recruiter throughout his career. But, and I don't mean long that they won't get them, they'll get more. Yeah, there's more, more on the way. The Atlantic 10 Conference Tournament champions, the Temple Owls, hit another three. This one, David Hawkins, to lead the Texas Longhorns. The first 10 points for Temple came from senior Quincy Wadley. That's that, the first other uh, Temple to contribute to the scoring column. That shot right there by Hawkins. That was Hawkins over Evans that time, and Wadley and Hawkins have made some tough shots on the side. Good job by Williams to go inside. See, good things will happen in there. Wind goes back out. Evans from the corner rattles out. They've had a couple like that. Reach in foul on Darren Kelly of Texas. The first to four today in New Orleans. Texas and Temple with Florida, Western Kentucky. Tonight, Penn State Providence as Big Ten meets Big East and then North Carolina, Princeton. All eight of the teams here in New Orleans at some point in program history made it to the final four. First time ever an NCAA site has had eight teams with that honor. Nice double pump by Greer. No movement on the inside. Had there been movement, he'd had a passing lane. Westby just stood still. Caught Greer in the air. Boy, lied inside on an out-of-bounds play can set some wicked screens. Here's the man with the hot hand, Wadley. Thought he was fouled. His first miss of the game after four makes, including a pair of threes. And here's what Temple wants to do. Keep that ball in Greer's hands. And there's Westby on another jumper turning. There we have three very, very difficult job shots to execute. Turning against your body with the right hand and hit them almost from the same spot. They've hit four threes in this game. Inside Owens, rejected by Lyde. And here's what that zone defense allows Lyde to do. See, he doesn't get caught down inside. He comes from the weak side help right there. Good job by Lyde getting up. It's really unfortunate. This young man, Jim, has not been able to practice. Now, I'm not talking about full speed. I'm talking about basically at all since January. Basically plays the game. So you can imagine from a conditioning standpoint how difficult that is. Talking about Kevin Lyde in the pivot there for Temple. Trying to defend Kelly passed and uh, Texas turnover. Lied with tendonitis in his left Achilles. Uh, the reason why been unable to practice. He went to Oak Hill Academy. Just one of those McDonald's D's played in the Hoop Summit game. Powerful young man. Greer takes the jumper. Long board to Freddie Williams. Well, Greer felt he was hit on the uh, elbow on that one, and I think he probably was. Oh, oh shot, Freddie. Oh. That's it's good. Williams is getting a lot of playing time, and I think he got away with a foul on the other end of Greer's arm, but then he goes and almost starts falling to the floor. Greer can't believe it. Williams from Evans, Georgia, and Jim, we've had a lot of guys lately in the NCAA tournament who've gone a long way from that area around Augusta, haven't we? I think they just kind of like the changeover. Final four, Augusta. Yeah, I like that turnover, too. <laughs> but uh, Ricky Moore of, of UConn, of course. And, uh, William Augusta Avery. Product. Yep. Williams unable to finish the three-point play. That foul was Greer's first. They do have a player with two already. That's David Hawkins, Temple. That's critical to monitor because it's again a Temple starting five that goes almost the whole way. He only dressed nine players. And Hawkins. Good job. Had Evans up in the air. Real good pump fake. 
Foul on Evans. First. Temple. 29,000 students in all as the Owls make the 12th consecutive NCAA appearance. But, you know, interesting, the record against tournament teams, Billy, only one and eight. Those who qualified for the tournament against the field, one well, and eight. Well, Jim, let's take in consideration, had they not made the run through the Atlantic 10, they were going home. They lost earlier in this season seven straight, which was the only time that's ever happened to John Chaney. They always played a very aggressive schedule, but he really hasn't had his back to the wall uh, in this 12-year run of straight times in the NCAA, much more than this year, had he not been able to go all the way through the tournament. And it's interesting, too, because he started out so quickly all the way to the finals of the preseason NIT, had Duke on the ropes in what would end up being the first of two meetings. They fell in the final there by just two. Boniker for Texas. Great rebound by Westby. And Jim, you know that second game against Duke may have really set them back because I think they really felt after playing them so well in New York City that they could get a piece of them in Philly. It just didn't happen. Thomas sweeps for Texas. Texas was also in the preseason NIT Final Four. Made it to the... They ran, ran, <laughs> yep. ran into the Blue Devils as well. Yeah, lost in the semifinals to Duke, and then Duke beat Temple in the final. Oh, oh there right was a the hands. Well, Bonnaker didn't turn around and see the pass coming. It's really not. It's a Williams turnover, but it really wasn't his fault. Westby, another three for the Owls. Well, what we see here is a great game of contrasting styles. Zone defense going against penetration, the man-to-man -man going against perimeter shooting. 21-15, Gonzaga in front here in Memphis. Right now, let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team. He'll be with us all weekend, and it's Brett Haber. Well, Ian, just to give you an idea of what Pete Gellin inherited here at Virginia three years ago when he took over the program, he only had six scholarship players on the roster. So Pete put an ad in the student newspaper for an open tryout for the Virginia team. He took five guys from that tryout, and to this day, three years later, he's still got two of them, Josh Hare and Jason Dowling, on the roster. What a long way to go from an ad in the paper to the NCAA tournament, Ryan. Brett, you're right, and you think about it last year, they had a legitimate beef. Could have been a part of this NCAA tournament. They were shunned by the committee. Off the turnover, Hand can't get it to drop. Don Don loses out. And Gonzaga gets it back. An easy basket, potentially, that Hand could not convert, and Hernandez almost carried it. He's, he had two, Hand, going to the basket already in this basketball game that he didn't complete, but you're right. Hernandez did get away with the carry just then. Dan Dickow holds it with his team up by six. Kyle Bankhead has checked in for the first time for the Bulldogs. On the baseline, high arcing delivery, and Mark Spink couldn't get it to drop. Into the hands of Hand, and a three off the rim. Inside, Don Don cleared out. Foul call. And that's where Spink really had the inside interior position just then Don Don coming over the back Spink a very solid basketball player I'm not Kreskin but I could tell you that there's a pretty good chance Mark Spink will either hit the deck or hit the scores table sometime today so we have to be ready over here huh no doubt well I'm bailing out if he comes this way these guys are too big for us seventh team foul called on Virginia so a one on one situation for Mark Spink Mr. Hustle and a player that keeps the team loose, kind of a team comedian. Hall returns, and Hand will get a breather. It's been a tough run for Hand. Missing some open shots. Spink gets the roll, a 67% free throw shooter, and yeah, something that pops to mind. This is what college basketball is all about. A freshman walk-on turns himself into a player came in at 167 pounds as a freshman six foot eight and by his senior year he's the conference defensive player of the year it's a terrific story and, and you know it really pinpoints for Mark Few at just how he runs his program a class act spent some minutes with him yesterday very happy with the way things are going Mason breaking down the defense to the rim and Roger Mason Jr. has six. And after made baskets, it allows Virginia to come back and pressure the backcourt a little bit. Seems Virginia has settled down a bit. I think they have. I think they've recognized. Oh, we're going to have an inside play here. Cavalry made his move, but there was some action on the interior, and they will keep it right there. 
looks like Friel down low, Pete Gillen's squad. They have come back a little bit, and I think they've regrouped. And I think what they've understood now is that Pete has probably mentioned to them that Mark Few's squad, every time Virginia touches the ball down low, there's a double team. So Virginia has to be under control, make good decisions down low, and they also have to recognize the penetration that the Zags are trying to just push the ball into the middle of the floor against them. One and one for Dan Dickow. He hits on the first. 86% free throw shooter on the season. He missed nine games this year with a broken finger, and Gonzaga struggled without him. Five and four. Goes to show you the importance of Dickow on the floor. Really a guy you can depend on to just help you and lead from both the defensive end and offensive end. Pump fake on a three. Freel inside. Rims out. And rebounded by Spink. Up ahead, here's Step. Pretty good defensive transition just then. Good close on the right in front of Pete Gillen. Gillen. Board, CBS Sports coverage of the entire NCAA basketball tournament is interactive through Ultimate TV. And a chance to go online and follow the NCAA tournament. Here in Memphis, it's 25 to 17. Gonzaga, the 12th seed, leading the fifth seeded Cavaliers. Jumper from the side, doesn't oh. go for Williams. Hall, who can sky, couldn't finish it on the follow. But Mason converts on a three. Great recognition, too. Virginia coming down the floor, understanding the Zags have now changed into a zone because they're giving up too much down low. Handle the pressure. And Gonzaga able to advance it. Here's Dickow, one on wall with defensive stopper Adam Hall. Step, pulls the trigger. Side rim on a three. Cavalry a save. Dickow straight away. Good decision just then by Cavalry, too. He was in traffic. Good rebound. Those second opportunities shows you where Dickow's range is from. He was about five feet beyond. Backdoor cut. And Hall able to finish on a bank shot. Virginia trying to pick away at this defense now. They've recognized, and I think playing their best last three or four minutes, Pete Gillen's happy with the way the execution is going. Mark Few a little concerned defensively right now. Look where he's standing, way outside right here, comes up flying, look at the good extension. He just buries it right away. As a team, Gonzaga shoots 40% from three-point range. And that's one thing about the Bulldogs. Even if they get down nine or 10 points, you know they can come back in a hurry. Some contact, no call, Gore left open. How about the hesitation by Gore just then? No one even around him at the free throw line. Little hesitation, reload, and knock it through. Comes in number 11 in the nation in field goal percentage, Zach Gord, 64%. He's got eight points. That's a season average. Back to the man-to-man -man defense. Gord with a step out right now. The Zags up eight. Williams, head and shoulder fake. And a foul call. Few was looking for a travel. It's Gord who picks up his second personal foul and another substitution for Gonzaga. Anthony Reason checks into the game for the first time, the junior from Ocala, Florida, and Gord will get a breather. Gord really playing some strong minutes, huh? Four for six from the floor, solid defensively. Gonzaga, 63% shooting, including three out of five from three-point range. Williams open look. Long rebound, here's Cavalry. Pretty good balance by Virginia. All in particular that time back. Good set. Defense is usually, usually set up by the good shot at the offensive end. Gonzaga behind the back from <laughs> Dickow. Reason on a kick out. Here's Step. Gonzaga can bring the lead to double digits again. Great matchup with Hand and Dickow out front. Inside, Spink, a swing pass. Cavalry. Can't get the hook, but look at Spink. Second opportunity. Dickow fending off in traffic. And it's rebounded underneath by Williams. Up ahead for Hand. On a cross-court feed, Mason Jr. Side rim. And Cavalry with a strong board. Good look up ahead. Dickow angling in. Didn't get it to go, but he is headed to the free throw line. See, both of these teams like to do just this, go up and down the floor. And neither one of them converting on the last trip. Watch the body jump here. He's going to jump from our looking at it from our left to right. Now, what you do there is you try to create contact. The first thing you want to end up doing is get to the free throw line. If you get to the line, it's successful. The second part of that shot is trying to put it in, and he nearly did. First foul on Chris Williams, the tri-captain for Virginia. And Dickow now with 12 points. Free throws, eight of nine, Gonzaga. 
7.15 to play. First half, 31-22, Gonzaga leading Virginia. Tack one more on the board. It's a 10-point lead for the 12 seeded Bulldogs in the South. Injury moments ago, the third member of our broadcast team is my partner in the fall. That's Spencer Tillman. He's got more on it. Spencer? Yes, Timmy B. I was talking to the, the uh, Lionized trainer, Ron Cardinal. He told me that Sergio got hit right on the shin right here. There's not much muscle mass there. It smarted, to be sure. He put ice on it. They don't expect him back in this half. We'll keep you updated. That's a guy that knows a lot about bumps and bruises. Spencer Tillman, his nine-year NFL career. 36 20 hour score. Hancock on the floor now. Nice work inside. Lynch got hacked, but it's a foul going the other way. Well, coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg will get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, a live look in at all of the action going on in the NCAA tournament. That's all coming up on singular at the half. Lynch picked up the offensive foul, his second. What Northwestern is figuring out now when off the ISOs is they can pass the ball up the drive. That's what we, right now the full court press is creating a little havoc if they can keep it up off the score. They need to score or get it into a dead ball situation. Nine turnovers now for Illinois. And as Gerald McCray takes it in and he's got a physical upper body, he's fouled. It'll go against Lucas Johnson of Illinois. A little bit of a mystery foul. You can see that driving to the basket, not much contact. What I call the benefit of being down 16 points. Archibald picked up the foul for Illinois. And McCray at the line. Sort of a power forward in a small guard's body as you look at the yearbook on Northwestern State. Champions of the Southland Conference Tournament. Their first ever appearance and they already can lay claim to an opening round win. Means so much to that really small community. A school that's known primarily as a education school, good business college as well. And uh, we're told the enrollment is uh, three to one in favor of uh, the female gender. Three minutes left here in the opening half. For Paul Yip, now on the floor along with Archibald and Johnson, who's been outstanding. Here's the trapping defense. You have to be careful you don't give up a three. Off the front iron, Bradford can't hit. This team is really growing in confidence, Northwestern State. And that's going to be a carry against uh, Byers Dawson. Frankly, I like seeing that, Rick. We need that more often in college basketball. Officials making that a point of emphasis. No question about it. It's a big point of emphasis right now. If you look at the some of the old films, you see the hand totally on top of the basketball. Then it went to the side of the basketball. Now it's almost underneath, and you have to take that away. It's a huge advantage. How about that? A 1-0 record in the NCAA tournament play. He's perfect right now. <laughs> right with a 16, 14-point deficit right now. He has to continue to stay in a half-court trap or full-court trap and create the turnovers. After a 10-0 deficit in the first minute and 40 seconds, he's got to be pleased with the way his team has come on. They once trailed in this game 30-8. to eight. And their eyes were wide open. Archibald using that upper body and strength powers it up. He's averaging about six and a half a game. Hancock with the dump down to Melvin Roberts. They have Fisher planted at the three point line, but Roberts gets it up and over Lucas Johnson for the deuce. Here's the pressure. You have to read the basketball right now and know how to anticipate. Josh Hancock looked like a flying Walinda. Going Teams up and over Lucas Johnson, Johnson there. His first. Teams 10. It's a young man that works with a fourth grade class on a regular basis in Natchitoches. Uh, Josh Hancock reading to some of the youngsters. Wanted to say Lucas hello to Johnson, the, those kids. They knew they'd be tuning in today during uh, the game. They wanted to wish them well. Johnson. Really one of those players that uh, Bill Self would tell you is all over the place. He's a floor burn kind of guy, a scrapper. And at his size can really make a difference, Rick. 6'8, 230. You need that type of basketball player. You get two or three Johnson type ball players on your team, willing to go into scorers' table, willing to get to the floor, pick up the offensive fouls. It creates great chemistry for a basketball team. Will Burks comes into the game, replacing Dior Fisher, who gets a word from uh, Coach McConaughey. 
Yeah, he, he had to do a reality check. Uh, McConaughey did on Fisher after that performance on Tuesday night. I mean, a triple double in in front of really the entire college basketball world. It was the only game played in the tournament, so it was as if all eyes on us. And, or to make sure the young man said tomorrow's another day. Well, some play, some people, some players handle adversity well. They don't necessarily handle success well. McCray, a three-pointer for Gerald McCray Jr., whose pop is on hand. Got over a torn meniscus that was surgically repaired. 40 to 27 now, 13-point game. They have to rotate to the inside, not give up a three-point shot. Good passing by Archibald baseline. Giving it up to Marcus Griffin. And one of uh, the proud Peorians put, puts it through the net. And it's a 15-point lead for Illinois. Hancock, tough shot. It's not the shot you want. You have to think pass before shot off penetration. Well, they're ragging the guards now defensively. Forcing them to work to get it across the timeline. And then another easy hoop for Griffin. Tim, when you have court press or full court trap, you have to cut down the angles. It's like a window closing down. And if you don't close down the window, you're going to give up layups. There's too many players on the other side of the floor. You have to close it down and make the court smaller. Johnson and Burks collide, and Lucas Johnson picks up the foul. Lucas Johnson, his first, team's ninth. Is you a good buddy, Bill Self? Yeah. <laughs> Last year, uh, Rick, I think Bill Self felt his uh, Tulsa team was in position to make it to the Final Four. They lost to North Carolina, and after I had seen them in Nashville in the opening two rounds, I thought their quickness would be a difference. But in that game, his uh, guards got into foul trouble, and ultimately North Carolina's bodies were the difference. Their front line was the really the key to that victory. Well, it was interesting in talking with Bill, he, the difference between Illinois and Tulsa. Uh, the egos of the ball players. Uh, very little ego with Tulsa. A little bit more self-confidence with the Illinois basketball team. Well, many more celebrated recruits at the Illinois level versus a mid-major like Tulsa. You've gone through that. No question about it. Uh, really, it's it's the difference between having a nice self-esteem and somebody being told since their early years of AAU basketball how good they are. Yeah. I mean, he's very happy with this group and uh, the family that they are. But it is different. You do have to make an adjustment based on what these kids have been told at the elementary and secondary level. 44-27, uh, just a second and a half discrepancy between the game clock and the shot clock. So Northwestern State will hold it for the final shot, it would appear. For those young players listening out there, if someone tells you at a young age how good you are, please say no thank you for the compliment. <laughs> What is it John Wooden said? Uh, we'll get undeserved praise and unjustified criticism. There's the alley-oop. Doesn't fall. Corralled by Archibald. At halftime, Illinois leads it by a score of 44-27. They led by as many as 22 after a 10-0 run to open the game. And Spencer Tillman standing by now with Bill Sutton. All right, Spencer. 44-27, our score. Greg Gumbel will be back with Singular at the half after this message and a word from your local CBS stations. Gaila. Darius and Gaila, who was one of the stars of the Lithuanian Olympic team that won bronze in Sydney last year. But uh, that's a far cry from his thought process right now. Nice. Oh, my goodness. Are they just decimating the interior defense with good cuts and extraordinary knowledge of how to play. Antoine Scott picks up this foul off the bench. And this is the screen at the top of the key. And this is the word slip that comes into the jargon, the lexicon of basketball. You screen, you anticipate, and slip to the goal. Cornette, as well as others, do it beautifully for Butler. One more. And number 23. Thad Mata will be at a loss for words at halftime if this continues. What do you say to your team? Huh. What are you not doing well? I mean, <laughs> oh, perplexing trying to search for words. Continue it, guys. Get back out there. Joel Cornett gets one of two. It is a 30-point deficit facing Wake Forest. 
one game at halftime. The other three in action. We have first round play in the South and in the Midwest. And we'll bring you up to date right now. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular. The wireless company that believes in the value of self-expression. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to Singular at the Half. I'm Greg Gumbel in our New York studios, along with Clark Kellogg at Halftime, Illinois, leading Northwestern State 44 to 27. I thought maybe Rick Pitino said it best. <laughs> Illinois is a walking ad for Gold's Gym. <laughs> they sure look like men among boys. Oh, they certainly do. They're well put together, and they're distributing the ball. Everybody is moving and passing, and when you do that with the number of players they have that can score, you're going to put big numbers on the board. All right, Clark. Meanwhile, Gonzaga and Virginia... Well, Virginia had a tough time starting. They've now grabbed a one-point lead, and they are under three minutes of play in the first half. They are in a timeout there, but uh, Gonzaga started this game strong and then all of a sudden fell behind. But let's take a look at some of the action off the fast break. Virginia will grab the lead here. Adam Hall will take the pass in the lane and lay it in for two and draw the foul. Actually, we backed up on the Illinois highlights. This is Frank Williams finding Sergio McClain, part of a 10-zip run for Illinois to start that game. And then Brian Cook off the nice feed from Marcus Griffin. And Illinois was rolling well. Okay, now we'll move along as you take a look at the Illinois-Northwestern State game, 44-27. to Gonzaga and Virginia have now broken the huddle. They're headed back to the court. And let's send you to Memphis and join Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. Tournament experience. And with 2.40 to go, first half, one point lead for Virginia. Dickow had it blocked from behind by J.C. Mathis, but a steal. Here's Hernandez angling in, using the body, and he draws the foul. And he will go to the free throw line with a chance to put the Bulldogs in front. Mason Jr. picks up his second foul. Taking advantage of their opportunities and going for the basket. Here's Dickow challenging, but from behind again. It's usually the second guy who gets the basket, the ball rather, and blocks it and makes the big play. But Hernandez coming up with it and really getting to the free throw line. So situation there with the Zags aware of what was going on and making things happen at their loose ball into the floor. Neither team will go that deep on their bench. Alex Hernandez is a part of the rotation. A junior from Las Vegas, Nevada. Out of Valley High School and free throws for Hernandez. Both teams have hit the 10 foul mark, so Hernandez gets a pair. You know, and we talk a lot about it goes cross with the with the tournament in general, the low seed versus the high seed. And People, I think the fans spend a lot of time on that. But when you get on the floor right now, the last thing going through your mind as a player, you say, oh, wow, these guys are the 12th seed. They're You're not right. supposed to play. You know what you're thinking? These guys can play, and I better play. That's what it comes down to. Forget about the seeds and the numbers and NCAA tournament history. It all goes out the window in games like this. Well, right now, the 12th seed, if you follow it, does lead by one. Knocked away, and Mason had it picked off as he tried to drop it inside. Spink always around the basketball also. Loose balls, rebounds, block shots. He's just there. There. He's a factor. Here's Dickow taking his time as we will hit the two-minute mark first half in Memphis. Gonzaga leads by one. It's Gonzaga, not Gonzaga. It's a mistake made throughout the country. Cavalry. A three. Tough shot, too. He was falling away a touch. And with the good range, good looks, squared shoulders. His first point of the day off the interior. Gonzaga controls it. Hernandez staying with that basketball just then. Don Don, a factor, trying to loosen it up, but could not get the basketball. How about that for the Bulldogs? Their leading scorer, Casey Cavalry, 19 points per game this season, only three first half, yet they lead by four. Step on the interior. Doesn't get the roll. Cavalry couldn't get it to drop. And knocked out of bounds. Gonzaga will hold on to it with a minute 17 to play first half. Coming up Wednesday on CBS, Newsday calls Big Apple the season's best new drama. Find out for yourself what all the talk is about. Ed O'Neill stars in an all-new Big Apple. Special night. It's Wednesday after Survivor on CBS. Off the inbounds. Hernandez had it blocked. Gonzaga holds on to it. Dickow oh. gets the roll on a three. I love the fact that Dickow not only shot that ball, but looked towards his right to see where the defender was before reloaded. 21 first half points for Dickow. Hand hanging. And a foul call. 8-0 Gonzaga run. And a hand will go to the free throw line, looking to put an end to that. And recovering quickly, coming down the floor. But you touched on it, Ian. Dickow has just been all over. How's six for 10 from the field hit you? 
four of five from threes, 21 points, and wow, the confidence level is just tremendously high for him. He really benefited from going against Matt Santangelo last year. But if you don't think this kid can score points, how does 39 points against Santa Clara hit you with nine threes in one game, a school record earlier in the year, last weekend of the season? So this isn't a fluke. He can score. And Virginia better start finding him a little quicker. And hits on a pair. 81% on the season. He now has nine. And Virginia cuts into Gonzaga's lead. A minute to play, first half. They've had some results.